in today's video, I am taking the incredible cover art for the comic book, The Batman Who Laughs, and making it realistic using Photoshop. Let me show you how. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Colton, also known as Nerd Designer. Thank you, thank you, thank you for clicking on the video. Creating realistic images using Photoshop is something I'm sure you've seen all over YouTube over the past few years, and I'm about to show you how I go about doing it. It's always felt like this super difficult thing to do. It's like people think it's got this very high barrier to entry, but in my opinion, it's really not that difficult. I'm gonna show you three primary steps on how to do this at home if you really wanted to. Let's jump right in. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, stop the video, go up to the corner, just go to Benny's video, Benny Productions. He's the goat, he's the one we're all copying, he's the one we're all emulating, he's way better than me at this, so I go, you won't hurt my feelings, I understand. All right, you're still here? I'm assuming it's because of my perky nipples and undeniable charm. Like I was saying, the three primary steps to making a poster like this is one, creating the primary shapes of the composition using the pen tool. Two, filling those shapes with a high resolution texture. Three, light painting highlights and shadows with the exposure layer. And then there's a fourth step where if you really don't wanna do something super intricate, you just cut out a high resolution or a rendering model of that thing and then you just place it in because you don't wanna deal with it and you wanna cut corners. That's it. By placing the texture over the shapes, you're circumventing all of this work and skill that goes into drawing or painting photorealistic images by hand. We don't have time for that shit. All it takes to start is your reference image placed onto the canvas. Then you lock that layer, then you click onto the pen tool, set your fill swatch to no fill, and start blocking out the primary shapes. I'm starting here with the headband spiky BDSM eye blocker thing, which objectively makes zero sense. Remember when I said in the intro that this isn't difficult or hard or daunting? That's still relatively true, but what this definitely is, is time consuming. There's really no getting around the fact that this shit takes time. This is the worst. <laughs> I then found this rough metal texture off of Adobe Stock, which is where I go to pretty much find all of my images and textures and vectors because they have this awesome library of free assets that you can just use if you have an Adobe account that you pay for so it's not really free. <sighs> Being poor sucks ass. Either way, we move on. No bitching on this channel heard me no bitching unless it's about how master chief has a sex scene in the halo show or how batman kills people in the snyderverse or game of thrones season eight or the star wars the rise of skywalker or even all the sequel trilogy movies or the green bay packers or any call of duty game or the direction of the mcu post endgame or british people's teeth but other than that no bitching no bitching to place the texture onto the canvas you go up to file place linked and then hit enter then you maneuver your texture around and you hit enter. Move over to your layers panel where you move your texture layer above your direct shape layer. You right click and then you hit create clipping mask. You'll wanna maneuver back over to the canvas, click on your texture and then hit command T. This will put you in the free transform mode where then you right click and hit warp. And you wanna warp your texture to the rough angle that this thing is going to be at. From there, I needed to find spikes. And this is where that kind of that mini fourth step we were talking about comes in because I didn't actually want to do all the work involved with making a shiny metal cylindrical spike. There's too much intricate detail and lighting effects that I just don't have the talent to do by hand. So I had to go and find this super weird BDSM 3D model render of a letter kind of thing. I, I you know, boo. It works. So then I just clipping mask out spikes that roughly match the angle of the original source image. And once it's placed and it starts to line up with the original source material, I go and find a new spike and I repeat that process all the way around. And whether you like it or not, that's kind of gonna be the playbook from here on out. You're going to be picking a texture that suits the material and repeating the process of placing the texture, clipping the texture, 
and warping the texture. I decided the next biggest thing to do was the teeth. And this took so long. I individually drew each tooth, making sure to layer them properly because everything gives off its own shadow to the thing behind it. And you don't want one tooth that's technically supposed to be behind the other tooth. It should all just be in order is what I'm trying to say like an asshole. He's my cousin. Who is he? He's an asshole, sir. I know that. What's his name? That is his name, sir. Asshole, major asshole. So in the layers panel, once I had all the teeth drawn, which took me fucking forever, I then grouped them all together and labeled it teeth so that I could not only add global lighting effects to the entire thing, but then add individual lighting effects to each tooth. So what I did for the lip texture, the lips are just leather. I know it's kind of gross to think about, but it felt like that had the kind of shininess and the individual detail the lips would have, especially chapped gross ones. And all I did was put a hue and saturation layer clipping masked to the clipping mask of the texture to the shape. And then that was set to like a deep red, kind of this like the Joker has, you know, the classic big red smile. For the gums, this is a fun part. So I used a couple different images of just raw meat. This is, there's this stringiness to the raw meat that I thought looked really good. There's something gross and visceral about it. So I placed a couple different ones and angled them to be like a front and a side profile. And then that was darkened to this deep dark red, which then I used the exposure tool and I started doing the highlights and shadows here. This is where the eye sees dimensionality. I just went in with a brush. I'm lucky enough, I know some people just use their mouse, but I liked to use a Wacom tablet for all this light painting you're about to see. It just makes some of that intricate detail. I'm not as good with a mouse, and to be honest with you, my fucking wrist hurts all the time. I deal with intense wrist pain and carpal tunnel, so this helps with that. Then you just go in and you just paint. Whether or not you have any artistic foundations or backgrounds or traditional training, Part of the reason why this technique is really fun at the very least as good training is you don't need to know where all the shadows are just off the top of your head. You don't have to be able to visualize everything mentally because you can just lower the opacity of the gum meat texture and follow the shadows that are on the cover roughly. They don't have to be perfect, but it'll get you a good starting point for me. I usually struggle with hard contrasting shadows and making that look natural. So everything had to just be smoothed out and it took hours. I haven't spent this much time in the inside of someone's mouth since high school. What the fuck do you, what do you mean? How? How have you, oh man, what, you're just ruining it. You're, look at my lips, you're ruining it. Ruining, ruining the fun for the next man. The two most essential parts that are selling the teeth and the gum area 
is this really intense shadow right underneath, right along the line where the gums meet the teeth. You know, there's the base highlight and then the shadow. And then there's this little white, kind of little bright, bright red, almost white kind of thing happening on all the gums around the teeth. Then you just follow the same procedure for the teeth. You can kind of give yourself some jagged edges here and you can be a little bit more free with how intense you make these shadows because then eventually when you put all the filters on, it'll just come off more and more like jagged teeth. There's two different types of lighting that you're kind of going to be working with. You're gonna be working with global lighting, which is the big, big light sources that cover the entirety of the subject and wash them out. Just this is the big picture shit, right? This is the Michael Scott, the big picture stuff. And then you're gonna be working with a lot of intricate shadows, which are the gym, day-to-day -day small stuff. Like those are the shadows that come from each tooth. And those are the shadows that come from underneath the cowl. And those are the shadows of like the lips kind of just over the, the little stuff. So you're gonna be balancing, doing all the little stuff and then getting away from the forest, backing up, picking your light source and doing the global big picture Michael Scott stuff. After you've spent hours and hours and hours doing lighting and shadow painting, essentially, because that's really what it is at the end of the day, is light painting, you get then get to do the fun accent stuff, the stuff that really makes this shit pop. And I really enjoyed the blood dripping from the mouth. I thought that that, unfortunately, one of the two drips gets covered up by the logo later on, but I feel like they just add something gross. Like he's smiling so big, like Pennywise, right? It's just dripping out of his mouth and it's awesome. It's really easy how I did this. I just looked up a blood drip PNG, essentially. Blood drips, for whatever reason, have this wealth of already transparent PNGs on Google. So I just use those. You just kind of line up where you feel naturally the shape and the size and everything of the drip would work. You mask away everything else and then you just fade into the lips and the corners. The thing that sells a blood drip is the shadow from how three-dimensional it is. So instead of just placing it and leaving, not only should you darken it, but you should also go to the layer underneath and put a little bit of a shadow. So once you're happy with everything, you group all of your unlocked layers. You have to go in and you have to unlock everything. Once that's grouped, you then have to duplicate that group and merge that group together. So you can compress everything into a file that you can then run through the filters with. Usually what I do is, if you've watched this channel before, you know it. you run this layer through a camera raw filter, specifically highlighting the clarity bar. It kind of eliminates a lot of the visual noise that might have built up over layers and layers and layers of you fucking around because you're dumb like me. We're dumb. Once you have the camera raw filter set where you like it, you're not done there. At least I'm not done there. I usually do an oil paint filter set to these settings. You want it to be nice and you want it to make highlights crisp, but you also don't want you know, too much of that squiggly squaggle that comes on. It really adds a bunch of this kind of 
I don't know, whatever the fuck it is, but you want to keep this light. You don't want to go, you don't want to push this too far. Then you go to your filter gallery and you add a poster edge. This kind of adds that black illustrated line work to the edges of things. For this, it was thematically relevant to the comic book underneath, so I thought it was important. And that is my nerd designer cover for the Batman Who Laughs. Let me know what you think down below of my first Realistified video. If you think I did a good job or you think it looks like shit or if you think I'm just copying Benny and I'm a fucking hack and none of this shit matters. You might be right. Let me know also down below what comic books you'd like to see me do next. The two that I have in mind right now are Craven's Last Hunt with Spider-Man coming out of that grave and out of the mud in the black suit. I've also been throwing around The Last Ronin, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book. I have that one that I'm going to work on. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what I do here. It's the best way to support this channel. <laughs> Well, I guess that's time for me to go. I love you. Stay sexy. Bye.